Hi, it's Jan Beta, and as you can see, I'm back here with my Amiga 2000 that I'm in the process of restorating to bring it back to something close to my uh, original Amiga 2000 setup. And while this works pretty well, as you can see, and now uh, it is much more silent since I replaced the fan in the power supply, there's still a lot of work to do on this machine, as you can probably see. Um, one thing that particularly bothers me and that I want to fix right now is that I can't really close the case fully without screwing in all the screws. So here's the thing. Uh, there is a significant dent uh, in the back. This is where the back side of the computer normally is. and. Um, there's this dent there, which I want to get rid of, of course, obviously. I think, as maybe this had some, some impact damage, I don't really know how this happened. Uh, maybe this fell out of a window at some point or something like that. So I'm just going to take a pair of pliers and try my best to get this uh, into its original shape again, which should look something like this. This is the other side, which is perfectly fine. And because I don't want to damage the case any further, uh, I'm just going to use a pair of pliers and a bit of cardboard wrapped around the pliers. So I can hopefully maybe I could take a hammer to it from this side. I'm just going to try that. So I'm using the block of wood and a little hammer. Okay, so it doesn't get much better than this. Uh, I guess it's okay for now. Let's see if the case uh, closes again. Okay, now that's better. Nice. And it does in fact fully close again without uh, the screws in. So that's a step forward. So when I initially got this Amiga 2000, uh, it came with this SCSI hard disk drive in it. Uh, that was connected to this controller card, which is an ancient uh, one from 1988, and the hard disk also is from 1988. And if you remember the first video of the series where I try to uh, restore this Amiga 2000, which I'm gonna link in the corner there, on initial uh, boot up, this just made like a loud clunking sound, and I haven't connected it up <laughs> anymore. So uh, I am going to give it one more try and I'm going to reinsert the card and try to uh, boot from hard disk, but I guess it's just dead. This isn't even a SCSI hard disk, uh, just came to mind. This is a, an MFM, I think is, is what it's called, uh, like one generation before SCSI. Okay, I'm going to try to boot this up with the hard disk, so um, yeah, maybe there's something on it. Should probably connect the keyboard and stuff, just in case we get it uh, booted. So this is set up pretty crudely now, I connected a keyboard and a mouse. And yeah, we're just going to turn it on and see what happens. Okay, hard disk is very loud but spins up. And, okay, it's, it's recognizing the, the hard disk, but it obviously has a read-write error. But it, at least it does something, so I guess the controller card is okay, and uh, the hard disk is, itself is broken. So that's kind of a good sign. So I just booted a workbench, and um, as you can see, I can see the hard disk there. Which is pretty interesting, but it says uh, we have a read write error. So I wonder if we could clone this to some extent. It's very loud. Yeah, we can't see much.
Let's see if we can see anything on there. Yeah. We try. We try. We try. Okay, cancel. Ah, okay, so that's all that there's on there. We can still see the C directory. Not much of it. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if you can format it. Okay, so the hard disk definitely is broken and uh, probably not recoverable, so I'm just officially giving up on this hard disk. I already bought a replacement uh, for it, so let's just get rid of it. And of course, it is screwed in from the bottom, so we have to get rid of the whole um, assembly here, I guess. Uh, I think we can lift the um, disk drive and... This is the original workbench disk, by the way. I think we can just uh, unscrew the whole uh, thing that the disk drive and the hard disk sits, sit on. So let's do that. Ah, there we go. So this is the part where a uh, 5 and a quarter inch uh, floppy disk drive would go, or CD-ROM drive if you were fancy and new fangled back in the day. But uh, my original Amiga had 5 and a quarter inch PC drive in there because I had the um, A2088 uh, PCXT card in there which emulated a PC XT. So let's remove the hard disk drive, which is screwed in quite unprofessionally with a number of different sorts of screws, as you can see. So this is the bottom side of the whole assembly and the hard disk is sitting on this side, so I'm just going to remove these screws here. Okay, there you go. This is a 1988 hard disk. It's pretty thick. <laughs> so there's these little notches where these tabs go into. So it sits there nice, nicely, even without the screws in. <laughs> Which is a pretty nice touch. So yeah, this is nice. I could attach a second floppy disk drive, which I probably eventually will do. But for now, I have bought this from one Jens Schönefeld, who runs individual computers. Let's have a look. So this is not the most expensive part that individual computers offer. Uh, it's like 50 euros or 55 or something like that. Um, albeit, it's a very handy one if you have an Amiga 2000. So I should probably put on my wrist strap to not damage it right away. So here we are. This is <laughs> the Buddha Flash 20 year anniversary edition from 2017. And what it is, is a, a Zorro card that is an IDE controller, which has pretty modern IDE controller on it. And uh, this comes with a little uh, industrial flash drive that has all the uh, installation files for the OS's you would want for OS 1.3, 2.1, So this is a hard disk controller. So I guess I'm just going to put this in one of my Zorro slots and uh, try it out a bit. So and it says on the card the uh, side with the markings should face to the drives. So I can put this in here, I guess. Yep, and it fits perfectly. Uh, maybe I'll read the instructions first. <laughs> Don't want to screw this up. So this is what you get with the uh, Buddha IDE controller. Mind the correct orientation of the controller. In a 1500-2000 system, the components of the controller must face to the disk drives, which is this way, which we did, and the clock port must face to the back of the computer. Oh, this also has a clock port, which is pretty neat. 
uh, you can connect some extra peripherals there, some modern stuff mostly. In all tower systems and blah blah blah, we don't have a caution. Defects caused by wrong hardware installation are not covered by warranty. Double check all connections before powering on. Connect your hard drive or other media to the first IDE port and keep the installed DOM in IDE port 2. Start your computer and follow the instructions on screen. After installation, remove the installed DOM and keep it in a place safe. Uh, in a safe place. <laughs> More information about the jumpers, LED connector, and correct orientation of clock port devices can be found on wiki.icomp.de. If you want to use a CF card with an adapter as a hard drive, you will most likely need the free flash update that we are providing in our wiki. Our true IDE adapter is not supported. Open the power jump of each. IDE port if no DOM module is used. Okay, so for now I'm using a hard drive that I salvaged from a DVD hard disk recorder which is from 2007. It's a 160 gigabyte hard disk so it should, should theoretically work pretty well with my uh, card here. So I'm going to screw this down I guess. And of course I need an IDE cable, which I have stashed away somewhere, I'm sure, from back in my PC days. Found one, so let's see, this is going to be the master drive, so I'm just going to... I could never remember which one. These are all connected through, so I'm probably just going to go with the, the one that fits best. Yeah, <clears throat> so this, according to the manual, should be it. So let's just connect it all up and see what happens, I guess. Okay, turning it on for the first time. Okay, hard disk spins up. Is it going to boot? Yeah, and it's starting the installer. Well, that's convenient. So this, this is what we get. Uh, should be able to use our mouse. I'm installing in English for you guys. <laughs> okay. The mouse is a bit wonky. Drives have been added to or removed from the system. Updated settings must be written to the drives. Write settings. Look at that. And it found my Hitachi. <laughs> Nice one. So we can hook up more than two. Uh, this has like two IDE ports, but we obviously, as this is unit one and this is unit four, we obviously can attach more than, than two devices there. Nice. Okay. Professional file system. I can install Workbench 1.3. So this, <laughs> I can use the professional file system, which is probably a file system that can handle larger drives, nothing like the uh, fast file system. I think it supports up to 4 gigabytes. Let's see. Automatic partitioning and installation. Okay, install now. Error formatting partition DH1. Okay, so that's not going all too well. Okay, but it seems we are booting off the hard disk now, I guess. Maybe I should try another hard disk. Let me just get another hard disk. Uh, this one was a salvaged one, might just be broken. So maybe that's the case here. Let's see. Okay, so here's another hard disk, which is a Samsung, which is 120 gigabytes or something, that came out of a, an external hard disk I had lying around. So let's try again. So let's try this again. Right settings. There we are. Okay. Okay, so this has a fat, it, it recognizes the drive better this time. Let's go on and install Workbench 1.3 on it. 
install now. There's nothing on that anyway. Okay, it's writing the file system, mounting. Installation failed. Error formatting partition DH1. Why is that? Why is that? Let's reboot. So that's my hard disk, I guess. That's what I'm left with. Hmm. So, hmm, I actually have no idea how to handle this. Let's boot up the workbench disk again and see. Okay, so there's my booter install. There's my workbench, but there's nothing on there. Okay, and DH1 didn't get formatted, but we have a working hard disk. For whatever reason, it didn't didn't format it. Probably too large. I don't know. Let's put some workbench files on the workbench. I guess. <laughs> so just copy this this disk over. Yeah, there's just there's nothing on there. That's the problem. But it recognizes the hard disk itself. Okay, that's cool. Hmm. So I'm just going to select all. All. I'm going to copy it on our workbench. Yes. Yes. So this is going to take a while, I guess. Be right back when this is finished. So it kind of finished copying. Let's see if it reboots to the hard disk. Yes, it does. That's awesome. Nice one. Hmm. Okay, so we have a working hard disk in our Amiga 2000, which isn't all that bad. Can I get some info here? Info. Number of blocks. Bytes per block. Nice. So after some trickery, I actually got the um, hard disk working. It is working perfectly fine. Uh, no idea why the installer failed. It might be I have too little uh, RAM. So this is just, let me reboot this. This is booting from hard disk now. And I just copied, uh, manually copied all the files from my original workbench disk on there. Now there's my workbench and I also copied the, the extras uh, on there. So we have like uh, Amiga Basic and stuff like that on there which is pretty nifty, but uh, I can't format DH1, the second partition. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have enough memory to format the hard drive because it's too large, basically. So, uh, yeah, this seems to work. One quirk I noticed is uh, the LED connection. So uh, the peculiar thing about this hard disk connector is that uh, the center is uh, the, the positive and you want to connect the negative according to which LED you want. The top one is for the first device which is this one, uh, the second one is for the second IDE connector there. Uh, so you can have separate LEDs for both uh, ports here which is pretty handy. So the cable, it doesn't take 80-pin uh, cables, this is like a usual um, DMA IDE cable that I had lying around, it's going to take that fine. Uh, there is... are there other quirks? I don't know, it's pretty straightforward, just the installation didn't work for whatever reason for me. Hmm. So I'm going to look into that and try to install it.
one more time, I guess. So, I have the hard disk running reliably uh, with a Workbench 1.3 installed. My guess as to where uh, the installation failed, the, the automated installation, is that I have too little RAM. So it is like uh, one megabyte total in this machine, which it is an old school Amiga 2000, so it has like one megabyte, has um, 512k chip memory and 512k fast memory, which makes it basically the same as an expanded Amiga 500 with the standard RAM expansion. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of memory. So that's what's left. Uh, the more devices you uh, install in the system, the less memory you get, and this is like 341,608 bytes free, which is like 340k, uh, which is not much. And uh, the system says it can't initialize DH1, which is the, the other probably bigger partition of the hard disk, uh, because of that, probably. So the whole installation process failed at that point too, when it wanted to um, format the H1. Yeah, that's. I think that's about all I can do at this point. So I need a memory expansion, I need to expand this Amiga 2000 further, which I was planning on doing anyway, so it, it's not a big deal. But, uh, yeah. Okay, I want to take some seconds to thank my sponsor, PCBWay, who kindly provided some funding for this video. And they offer quality PCB manufacturing, and at the moment they offer a PCB assembly, meaning that you can uh, have the components put on the PCB, actually, for $30 for 20 pieces. So I recommend checking them out. So couple of days later I have uh, actually bought a memory expansion that is like a 2 megabyte memory expansion uh, for the Zorro slots um, that is upgradable to an 8 megabyte memory expansion which I'm going to do at some point uh, but just so you know I'm not going to show this again. Uh, I tried the Buddha install again on the hard disk that I put in there earlier and it failed with the same uh, error message. So I think it might have something to do with the um, Kickstart 1.3 not um, being able to see uh, larger petitions and stuff. So I think that might just be the issue here. Um, I think or maybe you'd need more memory than, than the two uh, megabytes I have now. Okay, here's our memory expansion. And I'm just going to remove it. So uh, these uh, inline zip packages are uh, Toshiba TC514400 AZ80. And these are the exact same ones that are uh, populated here. I think we have some, some jumpers to uh, set it. And uh, we are going to put everything in so we have the full 8 megabytes. <laughs> so we have to, I think we just have to put the jumpers, uh, both jumpers, one to the right, ideally. And this should work. Uh, this is the Memory Master 1.1 by BSC Luro Automation. It's the German Luro Automation AG. I don't know. Uh, so, let's just populate these. I never actually put these packages in some sockets, so this is going to be an adventure for me. Let's see. And by the way, I think these are the same modules that all also go into the... Or, not modules, these are actually ICs, but they are um, in a different package than the uh, usual dual inline stuff. These are the same packages used in the Mega Drive, I believe. I think they are the exact same ones. Well, okay. <laughs>
So they have like a like a kind of a zigzag uh, pattern. So I don't know if you can see it. They are like uh, angled. So let's see. Should go in here like this. Okay, that went surprisingly well. Let's see. So I just realized I didn't buy enough of them to populate all the little sockets. Hmm. Okay, let's see what this says now. It should be a uh, 6 meg now, I guess. So now I jumpered it for 6 megabytes, which it should have. Let's test all memory. So this this works. Nice. Okay. 7 megabytes total are better than nothing, I guess. <laughs> Yay! 6,685,865 bytes free memory. <laughs> Which is... Uh, 6.6 .6 megabytes. Nice. So for now, this is enough for my purposes. Uh, what I also want to do to finish off, hopefully finish off the hard disk installation, I am going to um, put the newest kickstart version in there that I just bought officially. So in case you didn't know, I'm just covering my serial number here on the EEPROM that I bought. Uh, there is a new version for Amiga OS that is 3.1.4. So it is a completely overhauled version of uh, Amiga OS 3.1, which comes complete with a kickstart ROM and uh, like a new workbench installation for that uh, version. And I bought the uh, kickstart ROM. Yeah, let's try just using that. Later in the game I want to kickstart switch and stuff like that and uh, all kinds of fancy things that my original Amiga had, but that's for other videos. This one is probably long enough already. I just want to get the hard disk uh, to fully work. So I think unfortunately the kickstart ROM <laughs> is located somewhere below here, this uh, whole riser thing, so I have to take that out again. But it's not a big deal because I didn't put the screws on the back uh, back in yet. So as I said, this is our kickstart. This is 1.3 mask ROM. I should probably write 1.3 on there. So don't get it confused with other stuff. Okay, let's remove that. So this uh, Kickstarter ROM has some early startup control, which is pretty handy in this case because I want to boot off the uh, CF card, the butter, butter install thing. Uh, select boot device, butter install. So I can probably, hopefully, just install Workbench uh, and format the whole uh, hard disk, which this uh, revision should support. So let's see if it does that. Use boot. So now it should boot off the Buddha thing, hopefully. Does it? Yeah, it does. Nice. Okay, so this is how it's supposed to look. So I am going to install in English. Scanning controller for drives. Should give me my hard disk. Yes, it does. Samsung. Uh, 120 gigabytes. Okay, install. And I'm going to install 3.1 because that's the most recent version that's on here, and I'm going to probably going to update it to the 3.1.4. Uh, but for now, let's just install and see what it does. Yeah, install now. Let's see if that works now. Hopefully it does.
arrow formatting. Okay. Why does it do that? Probably it's just too big of a partition. Reboot. That kind of sucks. I have no idea why that is. Uh, but as you can see, the ROM is working. 2018 Hyperion Entertainment CVBA. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe let's just... Uh, maybe the Buddha thing isn't working all that well. I think I have to manually uh, install the 3.1.4 thing. So for ease of use, I've connected my uh, GoTech drive, which is a flop. This, this is emulating one of these, but you can read like uh, disk files from the USB stick that I put in there. This is an old version. Um, it works. It has old firmware on it, but I still have... I put the um, installer ADF files, which are the Amiga format disk files, on here for Workbench 3.1.4. And I'm going to try to install it uh, by just going through the installation now. So, uh, probably going to fast forward this because it's pretty self-explanatory. I just want to see if I can get the um, hard disk to work properly. Or, otherwise, I think that it, for some reason it doesn't work. I, I don't know why. Okay, so at least we have our two hard disk icons showing up now. Let's try to format them. This should be workbench. Or, yeah, workbench. I guess. International long file names. Format. Yeah. Yes, I really want to format it. Volume is too large for full format. We're working to quick format. Okay. Initializing disk. Okay, that's at least that's something. There's something happening. Okay, we have a formatted workbench. Okay, let's format the other one. That's the huge one. Let's see what that. Oh, this should be like data or something. Ah, data. Okay, let's go to quick format. 109G, and it says G like gigabytes. At least. Not enough memory, okay. Okay, doesn't have enough memory to form the large disk. So we have the same problem uh, as before, basically. But it does something, look. Okay, so it's unable to verify. But it did form it. Yeah, okay. But it says no. 0 bytes free, 109 in use, so that's probably takes a little while at least. Not a valid DOS disk, okay. <laughs> okay, it's having some problems, I guess. So this says 0 free. A workbench partition, on the other hand, works perfectly it seems 2.1 gigabytes that's actually that's plenty let's install 3.1.4 and let's I just want to install basically yeah that's the one English Hey, so now we should be booting into 
Amigo S 3.1.4 from the hard disk. Error validating data, not enough memory available. Yeah, okay. So I can't validate the disk. It should nevertheless, hopefully, boot. Yeah. So it can't validate data, so that's formatted, but it can't verify it. Huh, interesting. It doesn't have enough memory for that. But we have a full workbench installation here. It's pretty nice. <laughs> so yeah, this works beautifully. Except for... Uh, our data. <clears throat> so if anybody knows a fix for that, please let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm out of ideas, pretty much. Uh, other than just blindly adding more memory or something? I don't know. Hmm. It's kind of like an interesting, uh, interesting thing. Because I have no idea. This should, this supports, obviously supports uh, this disk. But it can't validate it to, to make it usable, actually. Maybe there's some way of validating the disk, uh, like manually or something like that. I don't know, I have no idea at the moment. But other than that, we have like a 2 gig uh, workbench partition, which is pretty handy. So, yeah. There is going to be more episodes about this, I guess, because I didn't get anywhere, really. Except for installing this new workbench with it, which is pretty nice. So, hope you find this informative nonetheless. Uh, so much for now. I'm Jan Peter. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>